thank you and congratulations on your wonderful new purchase of a new Civic EHEV. In this handover video, we're going to give you some of the key points to get you up and running with your wonderful new vehicle. So we will cover those off for you. We'll go around the car. We'll start off on the outside through unlocking and locking the car through to a little bit of the technology under the bonnet and some of the settings that we've got inside so that you can personalize this car to exactly how you want it to be. So first things first, we can see that the car's locked, it's folded its door mirrors in and I've got the key in my hand. So to start with, I'm just gonna pop the key in my, my pocket because all three grades, it doesn't matter which one you've bought, elegance, sport or advanced, this is the, the advanced model, so uh, some things may look a little bit different uh, depending on which one you've actually ordered, but they all come with uh, smart entry. So it is locked at the moment, and because uh, so I've got the key in my pocket, I can just place my hand behind the handle and it's going to unlock the car. So you'll hear it unlock. And now, because I've got this one set up in the settings inside the car, it will have unlocked all of the doors, including the tailgate. You can, if you prefer, have it set up so that it will only unlock the driver's door and we'll show you that shortly inside. But of course, you, you may not want to leave the, the key in your pocket, handbag, rucksack or whatever. You might want to physically use the key fob because you can do that from further afield. So I can you know, press that, lock it and it's locked. That's brilliant. The other lovely feature about the actual physical key fob is that imagine it's a, a nice hot summer's day um, and I want to get the warm air out of the cabin, I can simply uh, press the unlock button and press and hold it again and that's going to wind down the windows for me and if I've got an advanced model as this one is, it's going to wind back the panoramic roof as well so it lets that warm air out of the cabin outside. So. The reverse is true, so obviously we are open at the moment. If I want to, to lock it and fold in the, uh, the door mirrors as well, I can just press the lock button, press and hold it, and then it will close up the, uh, the windows and again, close that panoramic roof. So we're gonna get inside the vehicle and whichever way we choose to do it, it's gonna unwind the, uh, the door mirrors here. So, don't worry if you ever come back to your car and you find that maybe somebody's bumped into it or something like that uh, and the mirror's facing this way that's designed so that our mirrors will actually fold both ways and not cause any damage just simply pop it back into place so in that uh, mirror glass you can actually see the little indicator there for the blind spot information so if that illuminates amber that means that the car has detected something in your blind spot so just be cautious if you're about to make that manoeuvre left or right whichever way because uh, there could be something there just giving you that extra sort of heads up about what's behind you now let's get inside Okay, so now we're inside. It's very tempting to actually start looking at everything that's in front of you. We're gonna do that in a moment. We're going to go a little bit of safety first. So of course, I'm going to get my, my seat, my steering wheel, and my uh, uh, seat belt all perfectly set up for me. So I've got some little uh, switches just down the side here because I'm in the advanced model where I can just get the, uh, the position of my seat electronically adjusted. So that feels about good. I can get full movement on both of the pedals there. And then the steering wheel, just down here, I've got my lever to release that so I can move that in out. So I think just about there. Yeah, that feels good. Nice little bend in my arm there as well. So next thing is my seatbelt. I'll pop the seat belt on and just above my right shoulder there's a slider on the B pillar of the car so I want to make sure that's not too high so I'm just going to drop that down a little bit just so it sits across my shoulder. Now that is all set up but just because we're doing this film for yourselves I do have a microphone here so I'm going to take this off now we know it's set so it doesn't interfere with your audio. So seat set, steering wheel set and also my seat belt. Now I can start focusing on the real fun stuff. So getting ready to drive could not be more simple. Pop your foot on the foot brake, the power light will illuminate. Press that and you're getting ready to go. You know that because you have an icon of a green car there with arrows underneath it. Now I'm in EV at the moment, you could be in hybrid, but you know you're ready to go because you have that green icon of the car there. All I need to do now is select D for drive 
and I'm good to go. So straight in front of me, we've got the sporty steering wheel. And on the left hand side of this particular one, it may differ because if you've got a sport or an elegance model, you'll have a little home button down here to adjust some of the features on the screen. But fundamentally, you've got very, very similar features on both cars, just a bigger display on this one. So I can scan up a track or back a track. I've got my volume and I've got a little roller switch there and also my voice command button. So that's going to help me, you know, driving along, I can use my hands-free controls to operate certain things on the car. On the right hand side we've got, working from the sort of the top down, I've got my button for uh, turning on the ability to use my speed limiter, intelligent speed limiter. So the difference between those two is if I set my speed limiter to, to 50 miles an hour that means with my uh, accelerator pedal I can go almost full throttle and the car won't accelerate past 50. However, if I need to go above 50 for safety reasons, if I put my foot flat to the floor, that's going to override it. So that's me setting the speed limit. Intelligent speed limiter, that uses the information from the multi-purpose camera at the top there that reads the, uh, the road signs and if I'm in a 50 or a 60 mile an hour zone, the car knows that and it will automatically set the, the new speed limit to that uh, figure. And again, for 99% of the, the accelerator pedal movement, uh, I can't go over that limit, but just as before, if I need to, I can go foot to the floor and it will override the system. I could also select my adaptive cruise control, and there, that's when the car, again, using the multi-purpose camera, recognises the vehicle in front. So let's say I'm on a, a motorway that doesn't have any speed restrictions. So I'm gonna set it to um, 70 miles an hour on adaptive cruise control. So as you'd imagine what that's going to do, it allows it to go up to 70, but not past that. But if there's a car in front doing 50, it'll slow me down to 50. And I've got this little one underneath where we've got like four bars and I can choose the amount of time gap I want between me and the car in front. So I'm perfectly comfortable and I've got yeah, what feels right for me in that particular situation. So that's my adaptive cruise. I've got my distance setting there. And just to the right of that, I've got, it looks like a steering wheel with, with dotted lines to the side. Now that is for my lane keeping assist system. So when I'm driving, let's say on a motorway or a dual carriageway, the car is going to tell me, because it can see the two painted lines on the road, it's going to tell me that I'm, if I'm sort of one side of the, the lane or the other, it'll give me a little bit of steering input to actually keep me centered. So that keeps me safer, but also to reduce my fatigue when driving, what it will do, some of those tiny corrections that you put in when you're steering that you don't perhaps notice, the car does those for me. Now the beautiful thing is that I, I've mentioned before, we have traffic jam assist now as a new feature on all three grades of Civic. So that means my adaptive cruise control could take me up to 70 for instance, but it could also slow me down to zero. And that can work in conjunction with lane uh, keeping assist system and it can offer the, the steering inputs which can now also work down to zero miles an hour. So if I'm on the M40 heading up north and then we come to a traffic jam, the car will slow me down and it can still offer that um, little bit of steering assistance. And if I'm stopped for less than sort of four or five seconds, let's say, it can start me up again. If I'm stopped for five or 10 seconds or maybe even half a minute, I'll get a little symbol up on the dash that says stopped. So to resume the car, I can press my resume button up on there, or I can just tap on the throttle to say, I've checked my surroundings, we're good to go, we're nice and safe. So that's really nice there. Now I did just press the resume and the, the set button, and that's how you would resume or set these features. And the same goes for your intelligent speed limiter. When you've activated that, uh, you want to push down on that little sort of toggle to make sure you've set it. That only then does it become active. So again, we've got a roller on this side, which allows us to choose what information we want in the center of that right-hand side of the, the TFT screen that we've got straight in front of us. Now that does leave two things, one on the front and uh, one at the back. So right at the front, possibly one of my favorite features is we have a heated steering wheel. So that's on there, that's gonna be all the way around the wheel. Probably don't need it today, but soon I will be taking full advantage of that. Now, the other thing we need to mention are these paddles. 
So if you've had a Honda Hybrid before in recent years, you'll know that this is for altering the amount of regeneration that you get when uh, you take your foot off the accelerator. Um, if you've had a previous Honda with a, a sort of a traditional gearbox maybe, you could be used to thinking of these as uh, paddle shifters for your gearbox. Well, this is a single speed transmission, so they are purely about regeneration. So I can pull the paddles and I can have uh, minus or plus on this one to adjust between one and four levels of regeneration. So how that works is if I'm driving along with nothing set on there and I'm just purely in drive mode in normal or eco, I accelerate along, take my foot off the accelerator and I carry on traveling. Um, and the only thing that slows me down really is the fact I've not got anything pushing me forward. So it's a really efficient uh, system. If, however, I want to feel a little bit of slowing down, like maybe in a traditional car, um, you could actually pull the paddles and as soon as you come off the accelerator, you'd feel the car slightly slowing you down. You can increase how much it does that for you. So it's using the electric motors to slow you down, not the actual brakes. So you could be saving on brake pad wear, but equally that energy that's harnessed is stored into the battery so that you can use that for free acceleration uh, moments or minutes later in your journey. So a really nice feature. One thing to point out there as well, is if you're in D mode, you'll pull the paddle, get your regeneration set, you'll um, come to a turning, come off the accelerator, and it will slow you down, and then it will reset. If you've selected sport mode, it actually stays in that level two or three that you've set for the entire journey. So there is a bit of a difference there, and that depends what drive mode you're actually in. So as I look at this, just in front of the regeneration paddles, we've got our stalks. So on my left hand uh, stalk, it's for the indicators and the illumination. So a small sort of push there will give you three flashes on the indicators just to change lane. And if you want to go um, full indicators until you've actually done some turning on the steering wheel and it uh, cancels it out, you'd push it all the way. Now, as we rotate this, the car defaults to auto lights. So if you're happy with it, just let the car figure it out. It has a light sensor outside. When they're needed, the full lighting will come on. Of course, you've got daytime running lights anyway. If you wanted to force it into side lights, you've got that position. And if you wanted to force it into um, dip beam, you've got that position as well. But I'm going to leave it in auto. I'm quite happy with that. Just in board of that, we've also got our front on of this particular grade and rear fog lights. And again, just to save our energy, we'll turn those off. So that keeps our, our lighting all set. And of course, we've got high beam support system. So as you're driving along, if the car detects that there's nothing coming the other way, uh, it can actually go to full beam for you automatically. And that's set up. You'll see the little A inside the, uh, the green light there for auto lights. On the right hand side, I've got my, uh, my wipers. So I've got right on the end, a little rotational dial here, so we can go onto intermittent, a fixed on speed, and we can squirt some uh, screen wash on either rotation there. And then if we go up one position, we'll get the wipers just to do one sweep of the, um, of the windscreen, just missed. Then we've got it in auto position, which is where I would leave it. Again, the rain sensor is there, making sure that it's got the, the right amount of cleaning of the screen for you. And of course, you can change that by this little sort of dial in the center, if you want more or less sensitivity. But if you wanted it fixed, you want to be in control, you can have it in a fixed low speed or a fixed high speed as well. So again, that's us sort of covered off on there. Nice, um, nice and easy to use and all really easy at hand. As I'm looking forwards, that's going to sort of encourage me now onto the meters. So if I just describe what's in front of me, on the left-hand side of this particular model, it's showing me how much energy I've got in my uh, high voltage battery. Uh, that's on the left-hand side. Then I've got my power meter. So this is something new. Um, as you put your foot on the accelerator, obviously you're demanding more power from the car. So it tells you what percentage of power you're demanding for drive. Then as you take your foot off, it can actually, uh, the needle will go into the charge area of the screen, showing you what's going in for regeneration. Now, if you have the, um, the regeneration set by the paddles, you'll get little triangular indicators just on that left hand side, showing you what level it will actually regenerate down to. Again, really nice bit of information on there. I've got my external temperature. I've got the, the time displayed there. 
Now, of course, we're in a studio, we haven't seen any traffic signs, but if I had, sort of in the centre, just slightly to the left of that, I'd have the indication telling me what the last speed sign the car saw would be. Um, I can scroll through my uh, limiter, intelligent limiter, and my adaptive cruise control on that button there because I've already pressed the top button. I've got my speed as a digital speed, so that's how I prefer it because it's nice and clear right in the centre. But equally, a lot of people like to see you know, like an analog type speedo, which we've got on the right hand side for you as well. And inside of both of those on the advanced model, with these little rollers, you can actually adjust what you want. So for instance, on the left hand side, we could have information on our phone. Um, if we want to select FM or DAB radio, that's easy to do. A USB source, um, we can customize the displays as well and just push it to accept it. On the right hand side, it's very, very similar. So just by scrolling through this little thumb wheel, we can have the power flow meter, we can have our average fuel economy figures, uh, how long we've been driving, we've also got a compass. Of course, if you'd set a destination in your navigation, that would come up with your next turns in there as well, so that's really nice. Uh, you've got your speed alarms as well, so you can set those. These are defaulted to off. And our driver attention monitor. This is a really nice feature. You don't have to have this displayed for it to be operational. So as you're driving along, we know it's recommended by Highway Code to stop after about two hours to stretch your legs, get some fresh air, glass of water, cup of coffee, whatever. So the car will actually monitor your driving style. So if you're driving in a way that is displaying you know, you might be a little bit tired, the car recognises that, and along the bar, on the, the, the base of that little uh, information, it will show you getting closer to needing a break, and it will actually warn you as well. So again, trying to keep you safe. Um, and who's wearing seatbelts in the car, and also our safety support system. It gives us here a clear indication what the car has picked up. If it's picked up the lane on the left, sorry, the line on the left, or the line on the right, and equally what's in front of it. And right in the centre, you'll see an image of your car. So at the moment, I can see my car has the headlights on. If I push that away from me, I'll go to, to main beam. If I put my foot on the brakes, you'll see the brake lights on the car in the centre will actually illuminate. And if we put our indicators on, like we did just a moment ago, you'll see the indicators on the car in the centre illuminate as well. So again, a nice representation of what you've got in front of you. On the extreme right hand side, we've got our fuel level. So it's telling me we've got a full tank of petrol on here. And as always with a Honda, when you see that little icon, the, the fuel icon, it has a little triangle pointing to the left. That's to remind you which side of the car the fuel filler flap is. And of course, it's designed correctly. It's diagonally opposite to the driver. So it's very unlikely because this is such a frugal car, but let's say you run out of fuel. Should you need to fill up with a fuel can, it's actually curbside, you'll be standing. Designed beautifully. So that's our information there as well. Moving down from the screen, by my right knee, we have the ability to change the brightness of the actual screens in front of me, just rolling that round. And underneath, there are three buttons down here. So one is to turn off my, uh, my, my traction, my vehicle stability assist. I would need to press that for a good couple of seconds before that will actually deactivate. And the only reasons I'd need to do that is if I was you know, stuck in fresh snow or something like that or, or, or soft mud and I'd need to spin the wheels to actually get going, then of course I'd turn it back on again. But for normal driving, as is the default, you would leave that on. Perfect. My parking sensor button, that's just to the right hand side. And remember, it's only on if there's a green light there. So if you share this car with somebody else and they've turned them off, the car's intelligent enough to remember that setting. So if you want them on, just make sure that that uh, green light is illuminated. Just underneath the parking sensor button, you've got what looks like a picture of a car from a plan view with a circle around it. And that is to allow you to, to modify some of the features of our sensing system. So if you wanted to turn off road departure mitigation or your, your lane support system, that's how you would do that. But they would reset back into the safe mode next time you cycle the power onto the car. And that kind of covers us from the dashboard point of view on our right hand side. So on this panel on the door, if we work sort of top left to right and then down, you've got the button top left, which will allow it to fold in the door mirrors for you. Now, when you lock the car, you can get it to do this automatically. And I can fold those back out again. 
The little slider here, we just have left and right. So pop it into right if I need to adjust the mirror. I just you know, use the little joy pad down there to get the right angle on the mirror glass for me. Then beneath that, we have the unlock padlock symbol and the locked padlock symbol. So that's if, uh, for instance, we can have it in settings that when we unlock the car, it just unlocks the driver's door, but leaves everything else locked. And for a lot of people, they prefer that if they're driving alone. Then if you want to let somebody in, you can press the unlock button, it unlocks everything. Now for me, I've got the settings to unlock all doors. So the flip side of that could be true for me, I might want to lock all of the doors while I'm inside the car. But you've got that little feature there, easily to hand. Just below that, you have a picture of what looks like a, a door with a window and a line through it. And when the amber light is on, that means that my all of my passengers, their door window switches are isolated. So I have master control over those. So I'll be kind, I'll turn that back off again. So everybody now can operate their own individual uh, windows. And we have the ability to push it down a little bit at a time. If we go all the way down, it's one touch down. And of course, one touch up as well. Perfect. Now we've gone from the center through the dash to the right hand side of the car. I think it's really important we focus on this center section now. And there is so much you can actually do on this infotainment system. So all three grades get this nine inch uh, display here, which is really, really clear, very easy to use. And if you ever get a little bit sort of lost or whatever, you can actually on here look at your owner's manual. So there's a few pages on here, and as you can see, you've got your owner's manual on that page there. Now, depending on your car, somebody may have, have moved this round for you, the, the other driver maybe, but you can move these logos onto different pages, but on mine, it's on the, the third page there. So we have a mixture of physical keys, so to, to go home, and top tip, if you're using this and you ever get physically lost through the navigation of the system, go home, because you'll find your, your way through it. You've got your back button if you want to go one step back. What a lot of people really like is our audio as well as adjustable on the steering wheel. Uh, we've got this adjustment here as well. So we've got this little knurled uh, dial so we can adjust the volume and you've got a nice positive click there as well. And to turn the audio on and off is just in the center. Just push that there. And again, you've got your uh, skip up or skip down uh, along the, uh, the, the tracks or different radio stations maybe. So what I have here, we go sort of top left and across, won't go through all of these with you, but there are a few things I think that would be nice to point out. All apps will bring up everything that is available to you on there, from clocks to the FM to general settings, navigation, owner's manual, all the way through to vehicle settings and Wi-Fi hotspot. So you can have these selected so that they're either on the home page or not. If you want it nice and clean and you only want a couple of things on there, just deselect, no problem. Um, navigation, the inbuilt navigation is really, really clever. So if you set in a destination, of course the car knows where you're intending to go. So it can actually make the car more efficient. So um, if you've got your destination set to, you're picking the kids up from school, I know you don't need the navigation to get you there, but if you set it in, the car knows the way you're going. It knows the terrain, so if there's a hill up and a hill down, it can actually be more efficient with use of the battery. So, let's imagine we're going to pick the kids up from school and we've not got navigation set. You get to a hill, the car can only be reactive, so you know, it's going to use more energy to get you up the hill because it doesn't know what's down the other side. It doesn't know it's going to get that regeneration coming down the other side. If you've set a destination into your navigation, it knows you're gonna be using a bit more power going up the hill, but you've got the opportunity to recoup and regain some of the energy for nothing on the other side. It's little differences, but it's little differences that can all mount up. So all the cars have navigation on there. We can pair our phone, we've got radio, traffic announcements, the power flow that we can have on the right-hand dial, we can also have on the screen here. So one of the first things many people will want to do is pair their phone. So I'm gonna go smartphone connection. Of course, I need my phone. So what I want to do, I want to connect a new device. It tells me I've got to have my Bluetooth on. So if I go into to Bluetooth on my phone and the two will start talking to each other, see if they can recognize each other. And then it's going to come up at the bottom as a newly found device. And it's going to say Honda HFT for 
hands-free telephone. And as soon as we've got that on there, we can just give that a little tap and we'll be good to go. So the nice thing is that we've actually got wireless Apple CarPlay on here. So if you're Android Auto, it's a wired connection and you've got two USBs here to, to plug that into. If you're using it for CarPlay, it's the one with the USB symbol above it. The one on the right hand side is, is purely for charging. But because I'm an, an iPhone user, I can just tap on my Honda HFT there. It gives me a code, I'll make sure they're the same. So it is, I'm going to pair on my phone. It asks me if I want to allow contacts and uh, favorites. If we're gonna sync those, I'm happy to do that. So now the two are having a chat, making sure they're, they're all um, connecting with each other. Of course, you can only do this while you're stationary. Uh, would I like to enable Apple CarPlay? Absolutely, so we'll click a yes on that. And again, just the final stages of that initial setup are just going to go on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So do I want to use Honda CarPlay with HFT? Yep, I'm gonna use the CarPlay. Now it may be a little different if you're an Android user, but the principles are the same. We go into our Bluetooth, we, we set it up, obviously we've got the lead in there as well, and the two are going to talk to each other. So we can now see, I can turn that off, pop it onto my wireless charger. So it's now turned amber, it's charging my phone for me, and I've got my navigation on here. I can go to my menus, uh, I can go to the main menu and I can flip across and see what, uh, what apps are appropriate to use, what messages, if any, that I've got come through there. Uh, but we'll go back to the navigation. It even tells me how much charge I've got in my phone and the fact that it is charging. So I've got that sort of that lightning bolt through it as well. So a really fantastic system. Now that's done. So if we go back to the home screen, what used to say smartphone it now says Apple CarPlay. And of course, if you're an Android user, it would say Android Auto. If we look at a few over here, and you can see this really useful little sh sort of shelf here. So if you're driving along and you want to, to tap across, you've got this little, we'll call it a shelf, that's going to help um, support and make sure you're pressing the right button as you're going along. So we can, because we're stationary, look at some of the vehicle settings, for instance. So this is where um, I can have my keyless access set up and I can have my door unlock mode that we mentioned earlier. So I'm set to all doors, but we can have it to driver only. I'm quite happy with all doors really, so we just go back there. Um, I can have my door and window set up. So uh, key and remote unlock mode unlocks all doors. Uh, keyless notification, we've got on. For it to fold the door mirrors when you lock it, again, that's turned on, and the remote window control. If you didn't want any of those, you can just turn those off. Not a problem at all. And again, with our lighting, you've got little things like uh, our adaptive driving beam. So the ability to, to not dazzle pedestrians. If you want that in a fixed position rather than being adaptive, you can turn this off. Your auto headlight timer, you can set it however many seconds you want. 15, 30, 60 seconds sort of delay on there. I'm quite happy with 15 there, to be absolutely honest. Headlight integration with wipers. That is really, really good. So if I've got my, my wipers on, it's automatically going to put my headlights on because if we've got limited visibility from through our windscreen because it's raining, then everybody else on the road has limited visibility as well. So it automatically puts my headlights on even if the daylight sensor doesn't deem it necessary. So that's a really nice feature that I am going to leave on. So you can see there is a lot of things that you can personalize on the car. We've got our general settings, we've got our vehicle settings. And as I said before, you also have the owner's manual on there. So if you ever get a little bit stuck, you can always refer to that and it'll help you through. Got some little favorites down the bottom. So if I want to, again, I'm probably you know, resting on this little shelf to make sure I press the phone or the navigation or DAB, but it's the, your most favorite features that you've been using all along there and that's our display audio system. So just underneath that nine inch uh, screen that we've got in the center there, uh, we've got our beautiful um, ventilation controls. So hidden behind this really nice honeycomb grill, we've got our little vents that are going to angle the air for you. And all you need to do is just wiggle those around. And then on the outer edges, you can actually turn those off or on independently, whatever you want. Hopefully you're never going to need this, but should the occasion arise, flat tire or something, that's our hazard light switch. 
Then underneath we have our controls for heating. And this is really, really nice because we have stuff for um, heated seats, which I do love. And again, it's really, really clever. Just like the parking sensors, it remembers how you've left it. So if I've got that set to level two and I power the car off, next time I get back in, it's going to be on level two, which is perfect for me. I will turn it off now though, because it's quite a nice day. Then I've got the temperature of the um, air sort of request for the car. So I'm asking it to be 19 degrees in the car and I can change that over here with my dial. And because I've got the synchronized button on, both of those temperatures will be identical. If my passenger wanted a different temperature, we'd turn off synchronize. I could have it at 24 and they could have it at 19. Perfect. In the center, it's another dial with a really nice positive click, but we've got our fan speed. So I'll turn that right down so that you can hear me. And of course we could turn it off as well. I will turn it back on just to demonstrate that we've got the ability to turn aircon on and off there. We've got our front uh, blasting that air conditioned air through onto the front screen. If we wanted to defrost the um, door mirrors and the rear screen, it's the button just on the right hand side of the on off button and then choosing where we want the airflow to be is just cycling through on that mode button there. And if you wanted to, maybe on a hot day, you've let the warm air out of the cabin, and you want to maximize the efficiency of your air conditioning, pop it onto recycle so that it's cooling down the air that it's already cooled down once. Or if you're in an area where whatever's outside, you don't want that smell coming inside the car as well. Or turn that off and you've got fresh air coming in to be air conditioned. Following on from that, we have our power supplies. So I have mentioned that my phone is on charge now, um, but along here we also have USB. This is for our car, uh, CarPlay, if you want to, or Android Auto. And then there's one on the right purely for charging. And we've got two of those at the back as well. And these are illuminated as well. So particularly for your rear seat passengers, nice and easy to plug in, even if it's sort of during the hours of darkness. And that's uh, got the, the 12 volt output there as well. If for some reason you didn't want your wireless charger to be on standby, you do have like a master on off button just in that bottom left hand corner. So if I press and hold that down, that will turn that off and obviously turn it back on. Just be the reverse of that. And it would actually go from green a standby and amber means it's charging. Then we're on to some of the, the, the drive controls themselves. So you may have seen this before on some Hondas. So we're getting ready to drive. I've got my foot on the, the foot brake. What I'm going to do, um, obviously, I've got my seat belt on and ready to drive. I push D and that means as soon as I take my foot off the brake, I'm going to start creeping forwards. And then I've got that smooth drive from our twin motor EHEV system to power me forwards. When I've got to where I'm going, I might need to do a bit of maneuvering. So reverse, you just push that back and that would put you into reverse. If you want to be in neutral, that would select neutral for you, as you can see. And of course, when I'm parked, I'll just press my, my P button. Further back, we've got drive modes. Did allude to these a little bit earlier when we were talking about the paddles. So you can have eco, you've got normal, you've got sport and individual. So if you want to set up individual, so we, we can scroll through those, you'll see those, those come up on here. We go into sport, we go into individual, and then we have the ability to customize those. So you can make it do what you want to powertrain, steering, and on this particular model, you can change what it looks like on the gauges as well. So on the sport and the elegance, it will be powertrain and steering because it has the slightly smaller TFT screen. But on this one, there are three things you can adjust there. When they're set, that's all set for you, no problem, and you can just scroll through. Now, every time you start the car, it, it'll it's probably going to start up in normal for you unless you've selected eco. So if you're driving in sport, what it will do to maximize efficiency, next time you get in, it'll be in normal. However, if you've told the car you want maximum efficiency and you've been driving in eco, it'll be in eco the next time you start off as well. So it's, again, it remembers, but again, it's very intelligent. Um, now, that's that section there. Moving back, we have our parking brake. So if I've got my seat belt on, and I want to drive off, it's going to automatically release. If I want to release the parking brake, foot on the foot brake, push it down, and that takes the parking brake off. And to put it on, 
is just to pull it up. The same logic as if you've got a traditional parking brake, up is on and down is off. A feature that a lot of people find really, really useful is brake hold. And it does exactly what you'd think. It holds the brakes on for you. So let's say I'm in a traffic jam situation or even just any little journey. We're always going to come to a roundabout, a halt sign, whatever it may be. So I've been, I'm in drive, let's say for instance, driving along, foot on the foot brake. If I didn't have brake hold on, I should put the parking brake on. I can then take my foot off the brake, select drive again and drive off. If I've got brake hold on, driving along, come to zero miles an hour and it holds the brakes on for me. And as soon as I want to drive off, I just put my foot on the accelerator and we drive away. Absolutely brilliant. Inside here, we've got the adjustable um, tray that we've got if you want to be able to access the front or the rear part in this storage under here, which is really, really spacious. So we've got that there for us as well. And then the only thing, really last thing to talk about when we're inside the car, are these little features just up here. So we've got a multitude of uh, little buttons on here. We can adjust when these lights come on with the doors opening or not. We've got the, uh, the, the screen for our panoramic roof on this particular model. And we've got the ability to open the panoramic roof on this particular model. We've also got our SOS button. So we have that, you know, it, it can trigger two ways. So heaven forbid there's an accident, but if there's an accident that triggers the airbags, what it would do for you, it would call through, there doesn't need to be a mobile phone in the car, it will call through to the emergency services. Now, the, the conversation would come through to the car. If you say, no, I'm all right, I don't need any help, that's it, the conversation's over. If for some reason you are unable to have a conversation uh, because the car knows where it is, it knows the direction it was traveling, it will actually send out through the, the, the conversation and the, the people in the call center, they would actually send out the emergency services to your location. The other side to that is you can actually take off this sort of, sorry, remove this uh, protective uh, little shield here. You can push the SOS button. If you saw somebody else in danger, you could get straight through to the emergency services so that the car knows where you are, because I might not know exactly where I am, and we can get help to the people that need it, even if it's not us, which is fantastic. So that's all up there as well. Last button here is to isolate the ultrasonic sensors. So let's say you want to leave the car in your garage, but you want to leave the windows down a little bit for, for airflow, for instance. Um, if you set the alarm normally, if a moth or a fly flew in, that would trigger the alarm because they're you know, really sensitive. So what you do, you press this button before you set the alarm, car's locked, press the button, and it actually takes away the ultrasonic sensing part of the alarm, so it keeps the car locked and safe, but as I say, no moths or flies are going to trigger the alarm. Perfect. Now we're here at the back of the car, makes sense to have a chat about a couple of different points. So many of you will take uh, or make use of the extra space by folding the seats down and some of you may uh, have child safety seats to put in here as well. Well the great news is we've got Isofix or iSize uh, locators down here so when you pop a child safety seat in it's like it's physically attached to the car. So you've got two points here and another two points on the passenger side and then the top tether would run over the top and it would attach to the back of the, the rear seat here. And folding the seat down couldn't be easier, whether that's for storage or a child seat. As it folds down, you can now see that the little uh, top tether locator is here and it gives you a nice amount of loading space for those longer items when you're popping them into the boot. And a really nice attention to detail feature is that the seat belt as you can see there, is well away from actually where the seat folds into and there's no chance you're going to catch it when you put it back in place. So just before we go to the back, we have the child locks here, so they're in the off position at the moment. If you want to engage those, you just push that little lever down, which obviously means then people can't uh, let themselves out of the car from the inside. You would need to do that from the outside. But in my instance, I don't need that. So we'll just carry on to the back. Now, at the rear of the car, there's just a few things really to point out. So the car, as you know, is now unlocked, so I can very simply just open it. There's a little electronic switch just underneath there. But let's imagine the car was locked. So just let's lock that up with the, uh, the key there. It will also, as long as I have the key on me, it'll open from this point as well. So just press on that and it will unlock the doors for me. Really easy, I'll show you how to lock it in a moment. 
Now we've got a massive amount of space inside here and what we've got is the tonneau. So that will slide across if you want a bit more privacy. And let's be honest, most of the time, everything you want to get in the boot will fit in there. But on some occasions, of course, you will need to remove that or certainly retract it. If you're needing to store something high up, sort of above the glass line, we have this little um, shield, which you can quite easily take out, not a problem, and it's dead easy to pop back in. So we just click that there, click that there, and we've got two at the top as well, and it's back in. Just to give you that little bit extra space, when it's back in, of course, it keeps prying eyes out as well. If you need even more space, you can gain a few extra centimetres by taking that out as well. But I think for me, most of the time, that's just going to stay in place. Now finally, hopefully it never happens, but should you get a puncture, of course, you're gonna phone your uh, Honda Care assistance and they'll be accessing this point just inside here. And that's where your temporary repair kit will be with that solution that'll seal a puncture inside the tire and also the tire inflator. So I did mention we talked about how to lock the car from the back as well. So just underneath here, you'll see that there's the release button, but there's a little oval button just to the side of it with uh, a little sort of pips on there. And when we close it, if I just push on that, of course, remember, I've got the key in my pocket. That will also lock the car for me. I can now wander off and around the car. When it comes to refueling, it couldn't be more simple. Now, as long as the car's physically unlocked, all you do, press the actual uh, fuel flap, obviously undo it. Remember you have the little storage area to pop it on so it doesn't bang down the side of your car. Rest it into there, and then obviously do your refueling pop it in and you will hear like a ratcheting system so you can't over tighten it and you'll hear that just click 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 as you tighten it up then you know you're good to go again so now we get to the front of the car and we've popped the bonnet so we know that the release is just by your right leg when you're actually in the the driver's seat and underneath here is where the petrol engine is so it's a key part of the ehev system so we know we've got a twin motor hybrid system that's going to power the front wheels giving us really good power it's smooth power delivery and almost instantly available torque of 315 newton meters absolutely incredible underneath it's the petrol engine that creates that electricity though as a generator so if we just pop the bonnet which is aluminium so it's really lightweight pop in the stay there and you'll see that we have a quite traditional looking um, petrol engine now, of course that means that you've got oil that you'll need to check regularly so we can pop that out you can't really see anything on that dipstick because the oil is super clean on there but of course you want to keep that you know between the minimum and maximum marks I'd suggest closer to the maximum would be would be my preference We've got brake fluid at the back. Again, keep an eye on those things there. And we've got two lots of coolant, uh, one for the actual car engine, one for the hybrid system. But if we're going to be honest, the only thing that you're really going to need to be topping up on a regular basis is the screen wash. Now, as we know, um, we have this smart clear system on the windscreen wipers. So you're actually going to be using 40% less uh, water or screen wash and water combination. So you're equally going to be topping up 40% uh, less frequently. So under the bonnet, nice and simple. The only things we want to be checking uh, are those things with the little icons on the top there, topping up the screen wash as and when required. So when it comes to closing the aluminium bonnet, it is really lightweight. Just pop that into place there. And you can lower it to about this sort of position. Just let it drop. And then you don't have to press on it. And you know, it keeps it nice and clean and perfect for you. So we've covered a few things there, folks. Hope that has answered some of the questions that you might have in this little handover video. So I'm sure you may have one or two more questions. If you do, please feel absolutely free to contact your local dealer. They'll be delighted to, to fill in any of those gaps that, uh, that we might have left for you. So you know who your local dealer is, obviously you've got the car through them, give them a call, they'll be delighted to help. And of course, if you don't see them before then, you'll be seeing them at your first scheduled service. So once again, folks, thank you very much indeed for the purchase of your new Civic EHEV. And we hope you have many, many thousands of enjoyable miles with this car. Oh, oh, oh.